Brandon, how would you describe your emotions watching this, knowing what John's been through on and off the field and, and what this means to him on many levels? Yeah, I mean, it was uh, really can't put into words what what the, you know, the last three outs, seeing how the teammates embraced him, or, you know, our clubhouse after the game. It was like we, uh, you know, clinched a playoff spot. It was, uh, it was just so cool with how everybody loved him and uh, what an incredible afternoon. Dan Connolly. Brandon, can you give us a little bit about your emotions in that last, uh, last inning and especially that last batter? My stomach was turning from the eighth on. <laughs> uh, a lot of things. You know, you just, a lot of things are going through your head. Obviously, your defensive positioning, am I going to defend for anybody? Who am I going to use? Uh, where's his pitch count at? There's a lot of things going on in your head. And so uh, uh, just pulling, I was just pulling for the guy. I had Dylan Tate up there in the, while we were hitting in the ninth, because I didn't want anybody up while he was pitching in the ninth, bottom of the ninth. Uh, so how we do that, how quick can I get Tate in the game if he gives up a hit, because he's going to throw more pitches that I'm comfortable with after a hit. And uh, I kind of really wanted us to get three quick outs in the top of the ninth, to be honest with you. I wanted to get it going. Uh, but so, so proud of him and Seve. Rich Dubroff. Brandon, how important is this symbolically to this team? You know, well, we just haven't had a whole lot to cheer for the last couple of years. And these guys haven't had the opportunity to celebrate uh, a lot of things. And, you know, it's been a two years ago was rough and stay competitive last year, but to, to watch our guys I'll celebrate, you know, that's a cool moment because uh, this is a tough game. And to have, you know, to watch one of your teammates, your brothers uh, do something, you know, really special is pretty cool. Joe Trezza. Brandon, how many no-hitters have you been a part of now? And can you also talk about the game that Sevi caught tonight? Yeah, this is my uh, third. So I got two Ariettas. Um, that was in uh, – Jake's was against Cincinnati against the, in L.A. Sunday Night Baseball that, that year. I think that was 16. Uh, and then uh, that was I did the outfield positioning, so I was just praying that no balls would fall in front of our outfielders. <laughs> Those two games, they were late in the game. Um, and then I just thought Seve was – I thought they were just working in such good rhythm. They had a great rhythm between them. You rarely saw, saw John shake. Uh, the tempo was amazing. I thought he received the ball extremely well and really proud of him to come a long way uh, behind the plate. And his receiving is improving. And uh, to catch a no-hitter, that's something he's never going to forget. Ethan Ruiz. Brandon, given how well John has been pitching, do you think he was, he was building toward an outing like this? Maybe not necessarily a no hitter, but just a performance where he's he's dominant from the first to the ninth. I mean, you just never pre can predict a no hitter. A lot of times, guys have no hitter stuff, and things happen. You a lot, a lot has to happen, you know, and and uh, that's why it's so special because it's so hard to do, and there has to be so many um, just have to, balls have to be hit at guys and. Um, we made some nice, you know, hazy on that ball that Lewis hit and Cedric on a really nice play to in center field shallow. But besides that, I mean, there wasn't any, I don't remember any balls hit hard. So that just shows you how dominant he was and how many swing and misses he got. Every foul ball from the seventh inning on, I would cringe. Uh, but it just showed you, I mean, the, the lack of hard contact against the major league club for nine innings is very incredibly rare and it just shows you the kind of stuff he had and, and the command he had today to be able to speed guys up slow them down and put the ball where he wanted to Richard Rowley Brendan 
we kind of live in a world where every year people say the aces are dwindling, right? There's less and less few number one starters. I'm wondering not just tonight, but what he's done this season, what he's done in seasons past. Um, you've been on, around a lot of really good players, a lot of good pitchers. In your mind, is John Means a true ace? God, I hate, you know, you don't want to label somebody, honestly. Like, I don't want to raise expectations of who he is, but he is definitely pitching like one. There's no doubt about that. Um, he has pitched like one from September on, from last year through this year. Um, and he's a guy that, you know, for me, aces not only give you a chance to win the game, but they go long, you know, they, 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 they can battle throughout a game and they, they give bullpens a rest and they make big pitches in big spots late in the game. And you kind of have a longer leash because of that. And John means is at that point for me, a guy that can really allow his bullpen to breathe. Uh, you trust him in any situation. He pounds the strike zone and he gives your team a chance to win every single time out. Dan Connolly. Hey, Brandon, with the exception of, I think it's rule 609B, drop third strike, uh, this would have been a perfect game. Do you think about that at all? And, I mean, with Seve, anything there? Yeah, I don't want to take away from anything. I just want to enjoy this special day. It's early in the game and a lot of game left. And then he makes a A-plus throw on a stolen base attempt that puts it right on the back. So just want to enjoy this, honestly. We have time for two more questions. We'll go Jerry Coleman and then Stan Charles. Jerry. Brandon, you talked about the celebration afterwards. I'm sure it's going to be a very pleasant uh, flight home. Um, do you know what happened to the baseball, by the way, uh, with John and, and where that may be going? Yeah, no, Urias had the ball. He flipped it to me and we were out on the field. And so I kept it in my pocket and uh, I showed it to John, but he, was, uh, he didn't want it right away because he it was uh, soaked. So I gave it to one of our clubhouse guys and they're, they got it authenticated and, and uh, they'll keep it in a uh, safe, special spot for them. And last question, Stan Charles. Uh, Brandon, you were around with the Cubs when Jake Arrieta was the most dominant pitcher in the National League that year. What does it mean for your team to have somebody that's pitching at that level? Well, I think um, you know, as you know, we're in the third year of this, and to have somebody that can go shut down an offense in in uh, the way he's been doing it, and give yourself a chance, and guys can feed off that. You know, for, with me, with Jake, Jake was incredibly dominant for two plus years and you just felt when you went to the ballpark this is going to be a fun fun game to watch a fun game to be a part of and that's where the feeling you're getting with John right now is you go to the ballpark means he's on the mound it's going to be a, you know it's going to be a fun night and uh you know that's back to the ace thing I've had for me that's what you feel like when when you have a number one or a top of the rotation guy on the mound is when you get to the ballpark and hey, we got a really good chance to win this game and, uh, you know, it means he's been doing that. 